thanks for the invitation and the possibility to give an overview of um, some uh, work on oriented sorry what uh, some uh, work on um, oriented matroids and sine tropical convexity so this really should give an overview of <clears throat> results you have seen already today for example um, and I will try to give pointers to talks you've seen last week today and also uh, during the week you will see further during the week um, so um, my talks uh, like will be in like three parts after which uh, I will try to give some space for questions so in the first part I will um, recall uh, my, my cable is not super long um, okay. <laughs> um, so the first part, uh, in the first part, I want to recall um, all notions which you have seen already today, um, essentially um, in, in involving uh, what is a tropical semi-ring, um, but already extensions uh, to, to the so-called sine tropical numbers. Um, then I will give you a different point of view on, on the tropical simplex method, or in general, maybe on the simplex method. Maybe, maybe you already have, are aware of oriented matroids, uh, then this is nothing new to you, but uh, I will also connect this uh, to, to what you've seen already, uh, how uh, combinatorial simplex methods solve with mean payoff games. So this is what was mentioned in the first talk. Um, and then I will go um, a bit deeper into tropical convexity involving sine numbers. Um, and uh, I will show you um, how this relates to oriented matroids and yeah, I will always have some, some additional stuff which, which goes even deeper involving, for example, uh, matrix over hyperfields, but let's just see how time evolves. Um, yes, so this is about tropical geometry, this workshop, like one part of this workshop about tropical geometry. We already saw a session last week on tropical geometry, um, but I also want to advertise a bit more uh, what one can do with this. Um, just, I would say, three success stories. Um, one involves essentially real algebraic geometry. So um, that's not my core research, but uh, so um, this is already quite an old success story. Um, and it involves so-called patchworking, which is to some extent what, what will be um, behind the ideas of uh, the sine tropical numbers later in the talk. Um, and so this, this was a, a construction which disproved an, an older conjecture. Um, then there um, is uh, the quite recent advances uh, on log concavity. Um, actually, there will be a talk by Cynthia Vincent later this week um, about log concave polynomials, I think, um, and, and matroids. So, but, but my point of view on this is that um, one of the um, tools uh, which was used in, in improving these conjectures by Huron, Wotter, and Welch was to consider a matroid actually as a combinatorial object, the so-called so Bergman fan. And I will also um, show you in the end how, um, how the signed Bergman fan um, is a signed tropically convex structure. Um, and so the last thing we already saw also in Stefan's talk, uh, which I really like, um, is uh, the, the proof that certain log barrier interior point methods are not strongly polynomial. And, and there, I think one of the main um, connections between tropical geometry and like real algebraic geometry is this limit process, um, which we saw like more or less in this, also in this pursuit series. And actually I won't take this point of view, but I will take a essentially purely combinatorial point of view. Um, and, and I hope that actually this can also help to see some relations more clearly. Um, yes, so that's essentially, uh, that are some success stories. Uh, and I, yeah, so most of this will, in some, some of these ideas will appear in my talk. But yeah, I want to start basic again. I don't want to assume that everybody saw all the talks and uh, maybe also to settle notation. So we have the tropical semi-ring, which are the real numbers with minus infinity for me. There's this tropical addition, which is maximization. Multiplication is addition. And okay, so for, as I said, um, I, I will recall stuff, but also extend stuff. So, so okay, and already here, okay, 
important additive neutral element is minus infinity, and I denote this by this by this weird zero. Um, and it, as it will be essentially about the algebraic structure, maybe of half spaces uh, and topic convexity. I also want to get a feeling again for how this uh, how calculations work. So just uh, yeah, just some warm up calculations. Um, yeah, five plus minus seven is five times ten is. 15 plus minus 100 stays 15 because plus is max. Then um, if you look at the solution of an equation, so they can have like usually a linear equation and like in one variable should have exactly one solution. Okay, but this is not the case here. So we actually can have a half line. Um, so there's already something weird going on. If you look at the interplay between like equations, half like inequalities and, and solution spaces. Uh, and so also one way I'd like to think uh, about these operations, um, which is like related to this um, limit process, is that we replace um, yeah, addition by maximization, multiplication by plus. But this is in some sense what happens if we use the big O notation. So if yeah, well that's if we compute the complexity of an algorithm, this is essentially what we do, what we do. Okay. Um, also, yeah, okay, you'll see it in a minute. Okay, tropical convexity. We already saw this definition. Um, okay, so what is important here? So we have a coefficient vector x, which is non negative. And this is essentially for all these tropical numbers I've shown you so far because everything is bigger or equal to minus infinity of the tropical additive neutral element. Um, oops. And uh, so the, the coefficients add up to zero, which is a tropical. Um, multiplicative unit element. Um, and we actually saw exactly this triangle already in, in some slide in the last talk. Um, and, and again, this is a tropical convex combination you see here, because the three, the three coefficients add up to tropical one equals zero, because we have zero plus minus one plus minus one, max is zero. And uh, so, yeah, this is a convex combination in the plane. So this gives a some point here in this uh, tropical triangle. Um, okay, and so observe again. So everything, all, all the all the points I've shown you so far are tropically non-negative because all the numbers are bigger equal to minus infinity, and we cannot have cancellation. So uh, if you think about like what what stuff we like, maybe about polytopes. Um, uh, if we we maybe want to to see if if um, zero is in the convex hull of some points, and this is like Farkas Schlemmer type ideas, right? Uh, so if we want to see if uh, zero is in the convex hull of some point, points, I mean, this is a separating half a hyperplane question. Uh, so this is a Farkas type question. So we, we should better have cancellation to have a good convexity notion, right? I would say. Okay, but this is not, not given right away. Um, and I, this was a, a first uh, idea, but I will, um, I mentioned another, um, like the, the outer description and how, how we already also get a leg there um, for this. Um, so if I write down a tropical half space system, um, yeah, so I mean, I wrote it down now in the usual operations, max and plus, just for convenience to get into the, uh, to, to the ideas again. Um, and we already saw in Stefan's talk that um, this, uh, the feasibility problem for such an inequality system is equivalent uh, with solving a mean payoff game. And this is known to be in, uh, like a problem in NP intersected co NP, but there's no polynomial time algorithm known. Um, and so, in there, there, this appeared in several versions in the literature in, uh, and or scheduling and, and in several reductions between LP. And so, I just gave like there, there are several refer references, but they just stated in different ways. Um, actually, already the original paper by Govich, uh, Kasanov, and Kachian. Um, like, I mean, they, they asked this question, but um, yeah, so I have these, these systems. Um, and there, I also already wanted to point out there's an important subclass of mean payoff games, namely the so called parity games. I won't define them. We will see talks about this on tomorrow. Great. Uh, we will see talks about this tomorrow, so keep this in mind. This is a subclass of tropical linear programming, as you see it. And so they are widely studied from automata, theory, logic, 
um, yeah, you name it. And uh, so there was a quasi polynomial. Okay, so, so they, are, they are also an NP intersected co NP, also no polynomial time algorithm known, but they are known to be quasi polynomial time solvable um, due to a breakthrough um, result in 2017, stock 2017 by Kalud et al. And since then, like I just list a few names, many people have contributed to the understanding what's going on there. Um, and yeah, so this is based on universal trees and yeah, more on this you see tomorrow, okay? Um, yes, okay, let's, but, but may, maybe let's go back to this inequality system. What do you expect of a usual inequality system? Maybe, let's talk again, yeah. So I'm not sure if this works, I just try and not, ah, I see myself, great, great, perfect. Um, so I, if, you, if you write down a uh, linear program, you would uh, expect that to have the form of an inequality system like this, right? And that's what we, what we like. Um, but, but here I say, uh, okay, and I think we already saw this before, these inequality systems were written in this form, right? So we have coefficients on both sides. That's quite undesirable to some extent. We don't like it, we don't know it. Um, but I mean, this is really just due to the fact that there are no negative numbers. Um, and so if we have such a system with negative coefficients, we could rearrange it such that all the coefficients on both side, sides are positive, and then we would like analogously get such a system. Okay, but maybe we actually would like to have this because I mean, this allows for more algebraic operations on the system, stuff like this. Okay, so I gave you now two motivations why we might want to have something like a negative tropical numbers. And yeah, here they come. So they were actually already int introduced um, I think in about 1990, I guess even earlier, and I again forgot what my, like the letters are, and I'm sorry. Um, I think Q is quadrat, um, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it, it, go, uh, it goes back to, to uh, like um, item potent semi-field theory, and, and if, if, if you, I mean, I will give you a reference in the end. And maybe you wouldn't recognize it, but this is like this already appears there. Um, so, and, and they showed, okay, if we want to uh, introduce uh, negative tropical numbers, then stuff goes a bit wrong. Um, why? Well, there's just no inverse to maximization. So something has to go wrong in some sense. And, and where does this go wrong? Well, I mean, we cannot only add negative numbers um, to get sine tropical numbers, which is the first. So, but um, if we just start adding up, then um, to get a proper algebraic structure, namely a semi-ring, um, then we have to use symmetrized tropical numbers, which involves yet another copy of the real numbers, which are balanced elements and which can be thought of as a blown up zero, okay? So if you have a bunch of elements, which is essentially zero. Um, yes, and so we, we uh, just extend this maximization operation in, in an algebraically reasonable way and this, at, um, yeah, max and plus. Um, and yeah, I, I, I want to just show this on this example, okay? So let's start easy, four plus four, max of four and four is four, okay, <laughs> fine. So now we want to add four and minus four. Um, yeah, and so to, to make this algebraically reasonable, so this should be some kind of zero, but we have to keep some more information. That's why we have this balance four, which is kind of a zero, but not really. Um, and then, so the next thing, four plus minus five, it's again like a max, so that's why five wins, okay, but five is negative, that's why it's negative five. Uh, so, and by the way, yeah, this just means like negative, tropically negative. Um, balanced wins, if we add anything with balance, balance, uh, sorry, uh, if we have the same absolute value, four and four, um, and then the balanced thing wins, like minus four and four, um, here, um, yeah, times, Okay, times what was times again, times was plus. So we add the absolute values, we multiply the signs. Um, sounds quite reasonable if what, what we know, know from, from usual numbers, right? So we multiply the signs of the two numbers. Uh, so we get minus 17, like minus three plus 14. Um, and yeah, also th this balance acts like a zero. So it should eat up all the signs. Yeah. Um, oh, actually this is, a, this is a positive tropic number, right? Um, okay, so, and there we just, yeah, multiply two negative numbers and get, get a positive number. Um, yes, 
So it's a bit cumbersome maybe, but one can, can get used to it and one can do surprisingly many things with it, which behaves surprisingly well, even if we, yeah, we have to take into account not everything is as we expect. Um, in particular, we cannot order this thing in the usual way. I mean, we can order negative and, trop uh, and positive tropical numbers and also consistently, but this balance stuff just, we have to be careful with this. And there are also no suitable equations, which essentially you already saw in my example before where we had this linear equation and the solution space was just a half line. So I mean, this was already a, a maybe an idea why equations do not work properly. Um, but we can define relations which behave more or less like we would like them to behave. Um, and well, as I said, like, uh, so we, equation, I mean, we, something should be a zero if we subtract them from each other. Okay, now we just get this blown up zero. Um, then we have a strict partial order. And this is essentially the nicest uh, part because this is really an order, not a relation. Um, yes. Um, this balance thing includes, um, yes, tropical zero. I guess I would usually uh, maybe also make it separate, but in general, it should include tropical zero, I think. Um, yes, so, uh, and so, so, but the most important thing for us, uh, I'd say it's the pseudo order uh, in the sense of uh, just a relation. And so the idea is uh, something is non-negative if it's really non-negative or in this weird balanced numbers. Um, and yeah, so they, they are not like, there are no equivalence relations as we can see here because it's, it's not transitive uh, like this equation. Um, and so this inequality, like that, that's quite nice. Um, this equality replacement. So this is a tropically uh, positive number. This is a tropically negative number. So there, so this should be definitely bigger or equal to this one. Um, and so all balanced numbers are uh, like bigger or equal to each other. Um, okay. So yeah, with this now, like I, I showed you the sine tropical numbers, I showed you these relations, which essentially replace this of this usual thing, which we want to have as an order. And now I can define a half spaces in this space and now observe. So actually the, I want to, I want to do the geometry in, um, in only in the sign numbers. So, so um, all the geometric objects I want to consider, I always only want to consider in the sign numbers, so no balanced numbers. So I, I only need the balanced numbers for computations, okay? Because natural objects are kind of in these sign numbers. Um, and so, yeah, I get these two uh, definitions, which like just parallel the usual definitions. We have open half spaces, we have closed half spaces with this weird relation. Um, and and the, the, the closed half spaces are the topological closures. Oh, this, is, this is fine. Um, and now again, okay. Now, I, as I told you, this uh, tropical linear inequality system, I uh, showed you this with a max on both sides. Now let's revisit this. Um, now with this definition, um, we, get, uh, we get this formulation here, which resembles a lot uh, what we kind of are used to. Um, but careful, so x here is still non-negative. That was our requirement uh, to be equivalent to mean payoff games. Okay, so, so for, for this feasibility problem to be an NP and it's a co-NP, we need that X is non-negative here, okay? Um, because if we would think, okay, now we have this nice formulation of inequality systems and they should probably all be equivalent because that's how we are used to. We can just formulate between these different, different versions. Um, well, this doesn't hold. Uh, in this case, um, so if we abandon the non-negativity requirement, then we get an NP complete problem because it's essentially. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can I will directly show this because uh, what I just want to say, I, 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 I just really consider this as a geometric generalization of that, of satisfiability. 
and which uh, is shown here in this proof. I, I give you a formula, uh, uh, and uh, these ors are replaced by the summation. Uh, the negation is replaced by the tropical negation. Uh, and if I even if like so, this already works for zero minus zero. Remember, so like zero minus zero coefficients, which is one and minus one. Okay. Um, so in this case, we essentially really get such a system is really just satisfiability. Okay. Um, yeah, intersection fast phase is just the whole system. Okay, so I, I would consider so this notion, these notions of half spaces, I would consider really as a geometric generalization of satisfiability. And I actually hope that maybe this can also help to to understand phenomena phenomena there in a, in a more geometric way. Geometric way. Um, yes, actually we are already finished the first introductory part on the basics. Are there any questions? So I thought this uh, in a digital, a virtual room, we are in a room. Uh, Gil, could I ask a question? Yes. Um, so what, um, what does the symmetrized tropical semi-ring give you that the signed tropical hyperfield does not? So rather than these balanced numbers, you, you are allowed multi-valued addition. So I did not fully understand the question, but maybe I tried to answer nevertheless. So the tropical, the, so the symmetrized tropical semi-ring is essentially the same as the signed real tropical hyperfield. Did I say it correctly? Well, it's usually mm -hmm. said called real tropical hyperfield, I guess, um, where we just replace balanced elements by this multi-valued addition, which I will show if time permits at the end of the talk. Okay, thank you. Great. Further questions? So that, that were the basics on tropical sign tropical numbers. You should have a feeling. Okay, because now we start fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, me, let me repeat the question. So the question was, if we have this first kind of system where we have this uh, kind of non-negativity on, non -negativity on the variables, is this essentially the same as this max system um, where, we split the uh, where, where we split the coefficients? And my, my answer is yes, this is really just the same. This is really a, just a formal reformulation, um, just uh, unwrapping the definitions. Okay, great. Yeah, um, as I said, um, let's start fresh a bit. I think I'm fine on time. Um, yes, so I want to introduce you to oriented matroids. So for now, we can briefly forget about tropical convexity and focus on a new topic, oriented matroids. And I just wanna give a very uh, hands-on example-based uh, uh, yeah, introduction. So I give you a matrix, five by three matrix uh, with real entries, and I want to extract combinatorial information. So I guess most of you are familiar with matroids. How would you extract combinatorial information from, uh, from such a matrix uh, to, to obtain a matroid? Well, one way would be you compute uh, the three by three determinants, uh, yeah, three by three, the Germans are the three by three sub matrices of this five by three matrix um, and see what is zero, what is not zero. Okay, this is one way to extract combinatorial information. Now I want to extract more combinatorial information. Namely, I want not only to see if, a, if the determinant is zero or not, I want to say, see if it's zero, if it's negative, or if it's positive. positive. And this is what I have done up there. Um, so I take the sign of the determinant, so this A123. Should just be the submatrix formed by the rows, rows one, two, three. Um, yeah, and, and I take the sign. I can do this for all the three by three um, submatrices, and then I get a so called chirotope of an orange matroid. So just think of this as essentially it's a matroid with some, addif some additional information. So to, to, a matroid would be a map really to, say, 
zero or minus infinity, zero if it's a basis, and minus infinity if it's not a basis. Here we get, uh, yeah, this zero minus or plus. In this case, I've chosen a, a generic matrix um, where all the three by three um, determinants are non-zero, so I, I only get these signs. Okay, a different way to extract combinatorial information is I look at the um, column span of this matrix and look at all vectors in this column span and I take the signs of the vectors in this column span. Uh, I did this with two vectors, like the first column uh, gives this sign vector and if we add the first and the third column, then like we get a new sign pattern, which I mean, just want to sketch. Okay, so we have a new sign pattern. Yeah. Third way to extract combinatorial information is uh, we take the, the vectors in the kernel of the matrix um, and take their signs, okay? Different ways to extract combinatorial information. And it turns out that they actually give the same combinatorial information in the sense that like as for matroids, um, we have can des uh, describe a matroid in terms of bases, circuits, co-circuits, uh, flats, and this is very similar to this. Um, and yeah, so I, I just I don't want to give too many axioms. I just want to give you one axiom system now. Later there will be follow, so there will be another one. But for now, only one, namely for chirotopes. Remember, chirotopes map from subsets like these bases, signed bases, essentially. Um, yes, so and so this definition comes from a de determinantal identity. Um, actually, this is a bit maybe um, misleading. So uh, before that, I had a, a matrix where the number of uh, rows was bigger than the number of number of columns. Here now, now think now this is like the the transpose. Um, just yeah, I didn't want to change this um, definition because it's quite easy to read like this. I think. Um, so this is a determinant um, identity, just this equation here holds in general and uh, in particular, but this means that what, what, what can be uh, deduced for the, uh, for the values of the determinants, well, such that this sum up there is zero, definitely one of the terms has to be positive and one of the terms has to be negative or all have to be zero such that this sum can be zero, okay? And this is the combinatorial property, which is used to um, define uh, chirotopes in general. So as I said, a chirotope is a map from actually tuples. So before I had a sign of that of the submatrices A123, for example. So one, two, three is ordered. Uh, as you know, like if I, in a determinant, I would swap to um, columns or rows, then, then the sign changes, right? So we actually need a, a, a map from tuples. And already the first property is uh, this alternating property that uh, like th this boils down to the question actually we can only take subsets and assign subsets because then for tuples we can just uh, fix one ordering and then get all the other values from uh, from permuting and so the second condition is the so-called are the so-called grassmann plucker relations um, coming from these relations up there the grassmann plucker relations like so they abstract these um, and so again, this is a, just a map from subsets to, uh, to signs. Um, and so, uh, so we have a set of, of these expressions and, and at least one has to be positive and another negative or all have to be zero. Okay, just, just axiom system for, uh, for a character of an oriented matroid, which abstracts these properties of the determinant. Okay. Um, Yes, now um, back to our old friend simplex method. Seen it yesterday, seen it today already. I want to give yet another different point of view. Um, and for this, I've yeah given you this picture here. Um, so, so actually, the the, the point, different point of view is not in the picture, but will follow soon. I just want to point to some geometric aspects. So again, simplex method. We um, go from vertex to vertex, but actually. Vertices, okay, vertices are defined by setting some of the equalities to equation, okay? That was one thing to remember. The second thing to remember, um, so, I mean, this red thing is supposed to be the objective function. Uh, we are lucky we already found the optimal point here. Um, and, but, but and how do we check that we are in an opti optimal point? Well, this is a local question, right? So, and so the local geometric question is, is this objective function 
in the uh, normal cone um, of this vertex. Okay, and so this vertex is defined by setting uh, inequalities to equation. And so these equations give me normal vectors. And so the geometric question is, is this vector here in the normal cone? And this can be written as a linear system. Okay. Um, yes, so um, in general, I give you matrix, right-hand side, objective function. Um, and for now, like, I want to write down your simplex method. I really don't want to care about feasibility and unbounded directions. I just want to give you an, an idea of what's going on. Uh, and also genericity. So we assume that all the vertices are given by exactly dimension many uh, equations. Um, and so now, now, as I said, we, we need two things, okay? We need, uh, we need points which arise by setting uh, equation, uh, inequalities to equations, and then I get these points by uh, taking, uh, yeah, this, this first, first expression, xj, and the other question was, is, is my, uh, at this point, is my objective function optimal, which is, it boils down to the question, is my objective function in the normal cone of the tight uh, inequalities, which gives the second expression. Um, and now I write, write down the simplex method for you, and uh, in a, like, we don't iterate essentially, like really, I don't want to iterate over points. I want to iterate over subsets of, of the set of uh, inequalities, subsets I. So, um, and yeah, I start with some subset, which defines a point. You can think point in this uh, uh, half space arrangement. And then again, like the first line has a negative entry is the question, are we optimal? If you're not optimal, there's a negative uh, coordinate, then we pivot. Okay, so yes, you know simplex method, but I mean, I really want to, to pinpoint that that, are the, that is what we need here, okay? And then we update, so. And so again, yeah, then we compute again, one of these other vectors. But what do we really need for this? Okay. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I want to convince you that you actually need this chirotope of a suitable matrix. Namely, this matrix um, which arises uh, like, I, I, I didn't write down exactly which matrix because uh, in, as I just want to, um, yeah, so the information is encoded in this matrix A, this vector B and C. And as I said, we only want to compute y, the yi's and the xi's. And to compute the yi's, I mean, I just need, uh, actually, I want to compute signs of the yi's and signs of expressions of the xi's. And for this, I only need determinants. Here, I wrote it down here, it's a bit more subtle, uh, how to write down in determinant expressions. So, but I really only need signs, uh, sub, um, signs of subdeterminants of this matrix here, okay? So really, I only need the chirotope to run the simplex method. Okay, what did we have so far? Sign tropical numbers, uh, tropical inequality systems, oriented matroid simplex method. Okay. Um, now I want to combine this, obviously. Um, and uh, I want to combine this in a way so that you can understand what Stefan was talking about at some point in a different way. So he was talking about, we can run the simplex method, like several pivot rules of the simplex method, um, also uh, for tropical linear inequality systems, um, and it essentially has the same run. I'm not sure if you state it like this, that's maybe how I would state it. I think I will state it also somewhere on the slides. Um, but uh, to do this, we need a generic tropical matrix, like we need genericity. And I want to recall what genericity means here in our setting. So a matrix is tropically generic. I think on, on some other slides it was mentioned, like this notion of sign generic. Maybe if you remember this, this is slightly different. I want to stick with this definition of genericity. So what in general does it mean to, for something to be generic? Like if you have a polytope, like that it's, for example, it's a simple polytope, it essentially means that some determinants should not vanish, classically. Okay, for us, uh, vanishing of determinants essentially means that some max is not, uh, wait, uh, vanishing means that max is multiple times, and why is that? 
because like the topical determinant is defined in terms of this expression and wait, I can see me again, right? Perfect. Um, uh, for this, I want to write down uh, just uh, for you what this actually means, uh, this expression here. This is a max uh, over uh, the permutations. Then I have some weird sign. Forget about the sign for now, okay? Actually, don't care. In this definition, I don't care about the sign. Um, I mean, you take an absolute value, okay? Just, I, need, I needed this slightly more general definition. So then I have this product. What is product? Again, okay, this is sum. Um, and I have, okay, so I mean, I want to take square submatrices. Um, yeah, I just write down this expression again. Some of these. Um, okay, so for a square submatrix, um, so let's say, let's say we have a, a three by three square submatrix. Um, I could um, use the entries as coefficients. Uh, um, as edge weights on a bipartite graph. And then uh, this expression is just uh, the, the question, what is the maximal assignment? Um, just as a, as a connection there. So genericity just means, is there a unique maximal uh, matching? Okay. Maybe this, uh, put this down. Genericity, unique, Maximal matching, maximal, maximal wide, maximal weight matching. Is there a question? Yes. Yeah, that, that's really the like. This is really the point. Um, I am not like so. If it's a balanced number, I'm definitely unhappy. Yeah. Um, if it's not a balanced number in this specific setting, I'm not entirely happy because I need a slightly stronger version of generosity. But what they, what what Stefan was talking about, this was essentially really only about if this expression is not balanced or uh, is balanced or not. Um, yes, yeah, so I mean, I, I want a slightly more general notion for some other setting I will show you in a bit. Um, but I wanted to write down this expression because now I can uh, just easily write down what, what the chirotope of a tropical matrix should be. Um, and so I would say, so the essence of, general, uh, of, of this tropicalization of the simplex method um, is that uh, we can associate to a tropical matrix, so we can associate a, uh, to a generic tropical matrix, I can associate a, a chirotope of an oriented matroid, and um, there is a real matrix which realizes exactly the same chirotope, so, and, and this was given in, in such a way, and as I just showed you, the simplex method really only relies on the chirotope, Okay, and by the way, this A is not really the A in the matrix, uh, in the simplex method, just as a sketch. So, but um, as this only relies on this information, um, like to me, this is the essence why, why, why it works to apply the simplex method for, for tropic linear programming in such a nice way. Okay. Um, and so this is like a summarize, again, what, what, what Stefan was talking about on some of the slides. Um, yeah, so for pivot rules, which only, I mean, I actually, at some point, I should have mentioned pivot, like I said, we pivot, so I mean, there's uh, some rules how we do, do that, saw a lot about that yesterday, I, I kind of shoved this under the rock, uh, rock um, <coughs> and so, um, yes, so, so we, not for every pivot rule, we can do that so easily to relate the tropical and the classical uh, run of the simplex method. Um, but uh, so what they also showed was just the purely tropical operations, computing reduced costs, something, something like this uh, actually works efficiently. It essentially boils down to some shortest path computations or, or matching computations, okay? So we, we know how to do this efficiently from combinatorial optimization. 
So this is kind of what is behind this. Um, yeah, no, so that's, uh, we are not sure about that and I will, I will, we'll talk about this in the discussion later. Um, I just realized I'm a bit slow. Um, I will, so I will just really briefly sketch this part, if, uh, like this, this last part of this second um, block, um, just as an idea, okay? Just look at these pictures, just follow my idea. Um, we saw a Knox talk connecting to Knox talk, everybody who saw Knox talk. Um, if we have a polytope and a height function, I think I called it weight function. No, it's on the next. Uh, if I have a, if a polytope and I have a height function, then I can, can I get a um, regular subdivision. And a regular su subdivision is, is a subdivision of a polytope. So here I have a, um, um, <clears throat> I forgot the name of this polytope. Uh, I have a subdivision of this. Thanks, a product of simplices. Uh, <clears throat> so I have a subdivision of this product of simplices into simplices. And so this can be given by a height function, but this can also be given uh, in general. Actually, there are axioms. So there are combinatorial axioms to, to, uh, to encode this. Um, and if I take, so, 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 and the funny thing is that the simplices are actually um, a trees uh, because like um, if I have a product of simplices, well, well, the product of two polytopes, the vertices are given by the products of the two, uh, of the vertices of the two polytopes, and the vertices of the two polytopes are uh, unit vectors. So I actually have just pairs of unit vectors, so they correspond to edges in the bipartite graph. So the simplices correspond to trees. And if I take the matchings in these trees, this generalizes the matchings I get in tropical determinants. So this is the idea. Um, and this is really, I mean, I wanted to give you this abstract view. So, and, and so the idea is if, if I apply this now to subdivisions, which I get from uh, having a height function, which is a generic tropical matrix. In this sense, I showed you generic tropical matrix, height function, subdivision, triangulation. Then I also get these trees. I can extract matchings and the matchings are really these matchings which I get from tropical determinants. Just an idea. Um, and it turns out that actually this, is, this information is, is enough. Um, and, and so even more generally, even if we don't have a, such a matrix, but just these trees and just such a triangulation, we again can assign an oriented matroid and we get essentially the same behavior. So this is actually a phenomenon which, which goes beyond tropical linear programming. So there's some more combinatorial uh, idea flying around, okay? But uh, that was the uh, end of this block. Um, yeah, so this was really just an idea. We can talk about this later. And uh, okay, maybe why, why I want, why I like this idea, and um, because I can think about the realizations of such a, uh, of such a subdivision, actually, and the realiz realizations of such subdivisions uh, are like can be seen as some fans, and in these fans, I can think about the weights we, which realize actually uh, the, the so the size of the coefficients which realize the run. And you remember that um, maybe from Stefan's talk that tropical linear programming can be solved in pseudo polynomial time which means if my weights are small, then I can, can do this efficiently. And so this idea that actually only this, this polyhedral structure is enough uh, relates this to re really this realizations of this combinatorial types, the, the complexity of, of running such a pseudopolynomial algorithm. Okay, so that really just as an, just an idea. Okay. No further questions, then I come to the last block, 
which really uh, where I really want to go beyond this notion uh, of con tropical convexity you've seen before, involving now signed numbers. And, and for this, um, I, yeah, I've, I've written down this, uh, in, uh, just this, this definition of um, convex hull. Um, and, and again, look at this definition up there. We have scalars, which sum up to tropical one, which are tropically non-negative. And like, so we have this A times X. Okay, and now there's this U. And now observe U, if, if, if this uh, term here is a signed number, then U just is, is really the signed number, uh, the signed vector. But if there are balanced entries, uh, oh, sorry. So this, so this U is, uh, um, operates component-wise, okay? So U is a map which operates component-wise. Uh, as this is not properly written there, let me just give an example. Um, okay, so U operates on vectors, component-wise. If I have a balanced number, and this blows it up to the whole interval between the negative uh, version and the positive version uh, with this absolute value. And if we have a signed number, then this just uh, gives the signed number. But as this are sets, I take, I take the union now, okay. Where does this make um, Well, I mean, I, I said we have an ordering and um, so essentially we have here minus infinity, which is like the zero. And then we have here r, and then we have here minus r, uh, and an interval is really just the set of numbers between these two elements in this ordering. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, just didn't want to mess up the blackboard. Um, yes, and uh, in, in this case, I mean, I take the convex hull of these three points, I get this triangle, and, and really, I mean, this is, one has to get used to this, okay? So this point here is the minus infinity minus infinity point. This is a copy of R, this is a copy of R, this is a copy of R, and this is a copy of R. Um, and as I said, so like we take these combinations, we get some weird balanced elements. We have to blow them up. So actually, this is really what's happening if we go over um, a coordinate axis. So this blowing up really connects to um, orphans. Yes. Um, yes, and so, so I mean, um, connecting to Ben's question, um, this is essentially, this blowing up is essentially we uh, translate this uh, um, operation, which gives a balanced number into a hyper operation. So actually, we, we, we take a sum here, we get a balanced number, but then we blow it up into an interval, so actually a set. Okay. Um, and this gives me a notion which behaves really well, generalizes the, uh, the notion of tropical convexity I've shown you before. So it behaves really well in the sense of, yeah, intersection of convex sets is convex, a coordinate projection preserves this, it's a hull operator. I mean, that's what we want of a convexity notion, of a hull operator. And it's, it's uh, yeah, defined by line segments. So I said it's convex if and only if um, the line segments between two points contained. Um, and, and one has, has to get used to this. So line segments can look like this, okay? And like, this is maybe what you would expect, but science segments can also just blow up. Um, and yeah, I, I just sketched only the more, more geometric part of, of the work. So this is uh, based on work with, uh, with Lazi, um, also this whole notion. And um, so, so one of the main statements there is like, we get this interior description, but we also get an outer description Outer description means essentially we have some separation theorem going on, which is kind of the cool part from the more algorithmic point of view. And, uh, but, but the point is like, we get an outer description in terms of 
open tropical half spaces. Do you remember that were those sets which were defined in terms of this strict inequality? Um, yes, so this Hull operation has an, a description in terms of open tropical half spaces, um, which is maybe weird, okay? So we are used to, if we have a polytope, which is a convex Hull, then we want to take the intersection of the closed, uh, closed half space containing this to, to get this, like, or general convex set, and yeah, okay, maybe this is a bit weird, but apart from that, we can get separation theorems. So actually, in the next talk, there will be more on this. So this is an overview, which then leads to the next talk uh, also, um, but I really want to get to the uh, oriented metroid connected to this. For this, we actually need another version. So it turns out, okay, this, 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 no, okay. Uh, this notion makes a lot of sense uh, from, from several points of view, um, but actually, um, uh, yes, so, so in, for, for other purposes, okay, maybe also remember, we had these um, tropic linear programs where, where we had like these closed half spaces, and, and I told you that uh, it's NP complete to decide feasibility of such an arbitrary system. Remember these weird things? Um, yes, so, uh, and if I think in terms of these intersections, so uh, first observation, these, the half spaces are arising in this way are not convex in the first sense, which seems like bad news in some sense. And, and as I said, so there are several obstacles, but there's also a lot of structure. Um, but okay, now, now we, so the first notion was essentially the convexity, which we get, uh, which is generated by the open tropical half spaces. Just take intersections and, and, and so. So the second notion now is what we get if we, um, which is generated by the closed tropical half spaces. Um, but I want to uh, start with the, um, with the interior description, um, which is then even more subtle. Um, but I, I really, I want to, this is a, a bit important now. So even if it's technical, you should, you should keep this in mind. Um, so because we need an addition which is not commutative, so because the left one wins. Oops, hello. Um, so the left one wins in the, this addition uh, if we have the same absolute value. Um, okay, so I add three and three, then the left one wins minus three, okay? Uh, apart from that, it's essentially like the the, uh, the addition you've you've seen before in terms of max. Okay, um, and and then we, yeah, just so this was important. Now, okay, then we have to, as this is not commutative, we have to go over all permutations uh, to uh, to obtain obtain the right geometric object. This is given by by um, here going all over all permutations, and then to to make up for the cancellation, we have to look to look at some, some phases, but uh, Matthias will talk about this, okay, in the next talk. Um, but so important here, we need this operation, we get to do some commutativity operation, and then we again get a description of this convex hull in terms of a more complex, a more complicated operator, uh, but, but essentially the same idea of we take convex combinations, okay. Um, and also, and this is a picture of a TC convex set. As you see, this is bad news. It's not connected. Um, but actually, we can see this. Um, this is still on the, yeah, perfect. Um, uh, so we'll see, see more on this soon. So if I take the convex out of these two points and Um, and and so I apply this theorem so because this now says like this this convex hull is really given by by taking the closed half spaces which contain it. Um, and so I mean you can just take two half spaces which look like this, and then this really cuts out the 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 middle part. So that that are two half spaces, and this really cuts out the middle part. That's why it's just connected. Okay. Uh, and, and like this is uh, in, inherently something 
I mean, it has to be bad, right? I mean, it's a connected notion which is connected to NP like satisfiability. It cannot be super nice. Okay, but it has like we have an interior description and an exterior description, so we have some kind of separation, which is surprising. Um, now the connection to oriented matroids, and for this I want to uh, recall another notion, uh, another axiom system for oriented matroids, but perfect. Um, but now, um, yes, already in terms of tropical notation. So, I mean, what did we do for the chirotope? We had a map from like subsets to plus minus zero. Okay, but plus minus zero, if you think in terms of plus minus one and zero, or if you just think in terms of tropical zero, minus tropical zero, and like minus infinity. Okay. There, there's no, like actually no difference. So I use this notation here. Um, so I get sine vectors and I just use this tropical notation. Um, and uh, remember, so vectors or covectors, um, this is just dual to each other. That was just the sine vectors in the span of the matrix, um, for example. Um, and so, I mean, if a vector is in, then the negative is in uh, because, yeah, I mean, we have a linear span. That's the second condition. Zero point is in because we have a linear space, so zero should better be in. Uh, and now I want to point you to the second condition, uh, to this, uh, like we have zero, one, and two. So C, uh, CV2, um, there the left sum pops up. Um, and this is really when we realize, okay, this is pretty, uh, this is quite funny. Um, yeah, so this is really exactly this left sum we just talked about. And so the CV3 condition is essentially some local, um, yeah, I can give you intuition, but this is not so important for now. Um, this just means there are many uh, vectors between two vectors. There's cancellation, let's say. Ah, no, that's fine. Um, but, but again, okay, so I said oriented measures in general chirotopes. You can also use this axiom system. And I just, I mean, I referred to the red book on oriented matroids. Uh, there are actually earlier references, but this is, it gives a good overview. Um, and so we can give an oriented metroid in terms of chirotopes or in terms of these axioms. Oops. Uh, and now I want to come to the real Bergman fan, and this is essentially the main last point I want to mention. Um, as I said, so for the Bergman fan of a matroid, like for, for me, is one of the key concepts which was used also like what well, lies behind some of these log concavity um, proofs. And so we can also associate a Bergman fan to an oriented matroid. And um, for, for, for like, so the idea is for a, uh, the Bergman fan uses uh, cones which encode the flags of flats of a matroid. Okay. Um, this real Bergman fan does something similar um, namely, we, we take a union of cones and uh, we go over conformal flags and conformal just means we just get more plus minus entries in the vectors. Um, we start with something which has many zeros and then we just uh, replace zeros by plus or minus along this flag of uh, co-vectors. This is the idea. Um, and so for this, we, we take a cone so these are the incidence vectors. So these incidence are vectors are zero minus one, one vectors. And um, so we can also take uh, the, the convex hull of um, signed bases. And this gives yet another uh, way to state an oriented matroid. And, and so what Marcel Zelaya in his thesis showed that this, uh, like this fan is dual to, to this polytope. Okay, and, and as time's running out, as I said, this is just some additional stuff I wanted to mention. Um, so the, the cool part now is if you look at the signed co-circuits and signed circuits, which are special vectors and co-vectors, namely those with minimal support, then they are orthogonal to each other, which just means, like, which is just the generalization of elements in the, uh, uh, in the image in the kernel are... Um, orthogonal, did I say it correctly? I hope so. Um, and then with this in mind, we can write down this real Bergman fan, which is yet another uh, way to write down an oriented matroid as a convex hull in this T 
TC convex hull sense uh, of the circuits. And um, so, uh, I'm sure if I can, so I can see. So this is this real Bergman fan. We have to apply some log map. This is fine. This is a, a convex, uh, this, this convex hull I've told you about. And this is actually the dual object. So this is in the section of half spaces where we range over all code circuits. So, so for, for you, the takeaway should be, all right, I think the takeaway should be uh, this TC convexity is uh, a suitable notion uh, for, uh, for understanding oriented matroids. Um, in a similar way as yes, the uh, tropical convexity is, uh, can be a way to understand matroids in, in terms of the Bergman fan. But as I said, this is additional stuff to, to think about later. Yes, um, that was my core content. Uh, everything else is additional. Thank you.